Hey guys, it's Ryan with AIinsidertips.com and in this video, I'm going to be covering five common mistakes that I see people do all the time inside ChatGPT. Now, by no means am I the number one expert or number one guru of ChatGPT in the world, but I've consulted various businesses and individuals who struggle with ChatGPT and I'm gonna show you in this video some common mistakes that I see people do all the time, including myself in the past. So. Uh, the number one mistake that I used to see, and this isn't a mistake anymore, but I have to mention it, is that before GPT-4.0 was released to the public for free, most people were using GPT-3.5 on the free version of ChatGPT. That is a big mistake. Never use this language model. I don't know why you would now, but before that was always the number one mistake that I would see people do is they would use GPT-3.5 instead of GPT-4 versus paying for it or going to an alternative with Gemini or Copilot or Claude 3. Uh, there are better options than GPT-3.5. So that's mistake number one. I hope you're not using it now since GPT-4.0 is released to the public do not use GPT 3.5. Make sure you're using GPT 4.0 or whatever the most advanced model is by the time you're watching this video. So the next mistake that's probably most common in my opinion is poor prompting. Now again, I'm not the number one prompting expert in the world. I find myself failing with prompts a lot, but it's through trial and error that I've started to master down the art of prompting or prompt engineering as we call it now. Um, but what do I mean by this? So a lot of times when I consult people, it's a lot of thin prompts. They're trying to throw very little inputs or very little detail into ChatGPT and other LLMs. And they're expecting this like silver bullet response, like a Mona Lisa-esque type article or blog post. And that's just not how it works. So for example, if I wanted to write an article about the best streaming devices in 2024, a common mistake that I see people do all the time is they'll just simply do that. They'll say, uh, chat GPT, write me a blog post um, about the best streaming devices in 2024. And they'll do a very thin prompt like that. And they'll expect to get just some really good article or really expert based article. Um, and while this isn't bad by any means, I mean, the Fire Stick, the Roku, the Apple TV, um, it's got bullet points. It's got some decent information here. It's got 2024. So there's a little recency element here. Uh, while this isn't a bad article by any means, and you can definitely use this and, and tailor it, um, what you should be doing, instead of just saying this one sentence here, is you should say something like this. I need you to be an expert in SEO, content writing, and streaming. Write me an SEO optimized blog post targeting the keyword best streaming devices. First, create an outline. In the blog post, use H2s, H3s, use a serious writing tone, use a minimum of 1,200 words, provide five FAQs, and make the article sound like it was written by a human. Now, sure, you could make this better, but if I click enter here, you'll see the, the amount more detail that I added to that prompt versus just saying something like, hey, write me an article, here's my keyword or here's my title, go. You'll see the amount of detail that I added into this prompt. And by doing this, it will improve your output quite a bit. So here's the outline that I asked for. And so the benefit of doing something like this and an outline in this example for a blog post is let's say there's something in the outline that you don't wanna talk about or don't want ChatGPT to write about. You could then just go back here and say, uh, actually replace number three or replace uh, this device with that device. And then you could rewrite the article based on the new outline. Um, so here it has an article here. It gives you an introduction, um, pros and cons, pros and cons. Um, so yeah, this is just a much better article in my opinion here. It had it has FAQs like I asked for. Um, supposed to sound more human-like, sounding like an expert as I gave it the persona here at the beginning. Uh, that's another tip here is to give it a persona, give your prompts a persona. I need you to be an expert in SEO, content writing and streaming, and then give it the instructions after you establish the persona. So uh, long story short, guys, this is a better way to write better articles in this specific example. Now I'm gonna go a little step further here and what you can also do is you can install a Chrome extension called AIPRM. I actually have it here, I'm gonna turn it on. Um, you can find this in the Chrome store. I'm gonna refresh the page here. And what this is going to do is it's going to have a library of pre-configured prompts. So if you wanna take this next level with your content writing, with short form copy, with, um, there's all sorts of other things that this can do here. So keyword research, e-commerce SEO, keyword generator, uh, social media posts, uh, blog posts. I mean, there's so many things that uh, AIPRM can do. Um, but to keep it on the topic of content writing, 
what you would do here is you'll see this has been used by 13 million people. You could simply click this. Now it's just asking for a keyword or a title. So I'm just gonna do keyword best streaming devices. Click enter. And then after you give it about a minute or two, what you'll see here is the output is much better than those first two examples that I gave you. So there's a ton of resources available for free that you can use such as an AI PRM Chrome extension um, to write better articles or better blog posts in this specific example. There are other use cases for marketing or anything else that you're trying to do with ChatGPT. Uh, but that is the mistake kind of circling back here is thin prompts. People just asking something like I did in the first example, ChatGPT, write me a blog post about the best streaming devices. And here's the blog post it gave, not terrible by any means. But then you compare that to something like this, where you have an outline, you have pros and cons, you have better intro information. Um, it's, it's just not comparable in my opinion. And that's a big mistake are these thin prompts. Now, another item to mention on prompting is that if you don't even know where to get started and you're still doing these thin prompts and you just don't know like, hey, where do I find good prompts, Ryan, without buying some expensive course or buying this like prompt guide from some other YouTuber, well, OpenAI actually has a prompt engineering guide and I'll leave a link to this below for if you wanna check it out. Um, so if you click this prompt examples, let's say there's specific use cases that you don't even know where to begin. Well, you could do explain code. You could do summarize for a second grader, a spreadsheet creator. Um, you could do something with directions, a tweet classifier. I mean, some of these aren't relevant. You could do translation. Uh, I understand that. But anyways, I'm just trying to provide you with some resources where if you don't know how to get started or what prompts to even ask, this is a good place to go. Same with Anthropic. This is the company that owns Claude. They also have a prompt library. So uh, Website Wizard, they have a Google Apps Scripter, Time Travel Consultant, Cite Your Sources. Um, so they have a lot of coding stuff with the SQL Sourcer. Uh, let's see here, Meeting Scribe, someone to take you know notes in a meeting. Uh, trivia generator, you'll see there's all sorts of different examples here uh, that you have at your disposal for free to improve your prompts with the help of Anthropic and OpenAI. So another common mistake I see people do all the time inside ChatGPT is really lack of organization. So on the left-hand side here, you'll see custom GPTs. Now, if you don't see this, you can like toggle your sidebar here by doing this. Um, but where I'm going with this mistake is that up here you see custom GPTs and then here you have all the different chats and you can scroll through. And if you've been using ChatGPT for a while, this is pretty infinite. Um, but one mistake that I see people do is they don't organize this or they don't clean up chats. And so sometimes it's hard to go back. Let's say, you know, I've run into this in the past. Let's say there was a really good YouTube thumbnail that I designed inside ChatGPT using DALI. Well, now I can't find it if I didn't properly name it or if I accidentally archived it or if I left it in, you know, the millions of other chats here on the side. Um, so I would recommend that you guys go through here and either just get rid of some of them or just get rid of these that you're never going to use these types of prompts again. Or if there were certain chats in here that uh, you were really impressed by an image that it generated or you were really impressed by a blog post or a social media post, make sure you rename this. So in this example here, let's say I want to keep this type of article format. I would click this button or this options with the three dots here. I would click rename and then I would do something like this and you can name it whatever you want. You could say like save uh, for blog post writing. And that way, if you come back and ever need to write a blog post again, you could simply hit command F and you could do blog post writing. And on the left hand side, you should see it pop up here highlighted. So I'll come back to this. And then what you can do is simply just copy and paste this prompt here copy this, whoops, did not mean to do that, copy that, and you would click new chat, paste the prompt in here once again, obviously find and replace whatever you're trying to do in, in the next use case or example, um, and then click enter and then off you go. So that is another really quick tip here and a mistake that I see all the time people do is they're not organizing their chat GPT interface correctly at all. Now you may think, well, Ryan, why are you telling us this when your left sidebar isn't very organized? And you're, you're correct on that. 
Um, and I need to do that after I get done recording this video. But in the past, when I had more time at my disposal to do this, uh, that is just something that's helped kept me in check, whether it was a YouTube thumbnail generator, I had one for a logo creator, I had one for a LinkedIn post, for Twitter, um, and for various other use cases, blog posts. So I definitely need to do that when I'm done with this video. But that is just the quick tip here, just making sure that your left sidebar is organized. You can easily come back to certain use cases. You could also make the same case here with custom GPT. So if there are only certain custom GPTs that you're using and there's some that you're not not, make sure that you just have the ones that you're using ready at your disposal. If you ever want to get rid of one, just click this button here and click hide from sidebar. If you want to add a custom GPT, click explore GPTs. You can click my GPTs if you have one there. Find the one you want, click that. Click this down button or this down icon here, click keep in sidebar, and then you can simply just customize and edit your custom GPTs up here in the top left. You can also add some here from the GPT store. Um, I just wouldn't go overboard with custom GPTs. It's very easy to do that. Uh, just find one that, or find a few that you enjoy for particular use cases, and make sure you have those saved up here in the top left for quick access. Now, another mistake that I see people make all the time is that they actually only use ChatGPT for everything. Now, ChatGPT obviously is the number one LLM. It is kind of a buzz name or a household name. Now, whenever you say AI, most people think ChatGPT. That's the first thing that comes to a lot of people's heads when you say AI or artificial intelligence, and rightfully so, right? It's, it's a great tool. I'm not trying to say it's not. Um, but ChatGPT isn't a silver bullet. It's not the best option for all types of prompts. And there are some alternatives that I want to show you, whether A, they might be better at ChatGPT for specific use cases, or B, ChatGPT sometimes goes offline. And when ChatGPT goes offline, you should have an understanding of what are some of my alternatives that I can use for free to continue leveraging AI. Now I have an extra video that talks through some of these alternatives, so I'm not gonna go through them in detail, um, but I'm just gonna give them here in this video. Microsoft Copilot, this is Microsoft's all-in-one chatbot. Uh, looks similar to ChatGBT. It is powered by Dolly for images. It can generate images, can generate songs using the Suno integration. Um, and it is also just a general chatbot here with different conversation styles. Claude, I'm a huge fan of Claude. Uh, looks like it logged me out there on accident, but Claude 3, I'm a paid member, paid subscriber. Uh, this is developed by Anthropic, heavily backed by Amazon, another quality large language model that you can use instead of ChatGPT. Uh, I do like some of the outputs that I get from Claude. I have a whole video comparing Claude 3 to GPT-4. Uh, unfortunately, that got outdated now. It doesn't cover GPT-4.0, um, but make sure you watch that. There's some good insights in there. Uh, Meta AI is another one. This is Meta who owns Facebook and Instagram. This is what's called Llama 3 is their language model. Uh, and this is the interface where you can use that. You can generate images. You have to be signed into a Facebook account to do that though. Um, but this is another option. Uh, Gemini, this is Google's version of ChatGPT. I'm sure you've heard of it by now. Not gonna, really going to go through that. Um, but Mistral, I'm not logged in here by accident. Uh, Mistral is another large language model. I believe they're from France or somewhere in Europe where the developers or company is based out of. Um, just providing you some options here. If you're getting fed up with ChatGPT, you don't like the outputs, um, or for whatever reason, if it's offline and you need to use AI, but you don't know where to turn, uh, these are just some alternatives that you can use. So circling back, guys, that would be the mistake is just thinking that ChatGPT is the one fit all solution or silver bullet to everything that can be accomplished by AI, which is false. So uh, that's the purpose of me kind of showing you those alternatives here very quickly. Now, another mistake I see people make with ChatGPT is they simply give up. They have this idea that ChatGPT is going to be a silver bullet that solves all their problems, regardless of how many details or the quality of the inputs that they give it. And then they're disappointed by the responses and the outputs. So they simply just stop using it, go back to their old ways, and then just have a bad taste in their mouth with ChatGPT and AI. Well, uh, the issue is, guys, is if you're watching this channel, you probably know it's not going anywhere. It's only going to become more popular, whether it's a new LLM or AI. It's only going to continue to adapt. Um, but I'm going to show you an example here of why you should be using AI and ChatGPT for ideation if that's someone like you where you've given up on ChatGPT. You don't know what to do next. At the very least, you should be using this tool for ideation. So what do I mean by this? Well, in this example... Let's say I wanted to create a course, which by the way, I am going to create a course for AI insider tips at some point. So stay tuned for that. 
Um, but let's just say in this example, I need help creating a course about AI and ChatGPT. And let's say I have writer's block. I don't know where to go from there. What are some ideas that I can do to get moving in the right direction? And I click enter versus not using an AI tool like ChatGPT and not even a search engine can fully answer something like this. So if I went to Google and asked this, you'd be presented with all these different articles. You'd have to dig through, find certain information, close out, go back to the next one. It's not as efficient as going into an AI tool like ChatGPT asking for some ideas that I could do for an AI course. So here it's giving me ideas, defining my audience. What are the course objectives? It even gives me a course outline that I could use. Uh, gives me some course materials, some platform and delivery. Gives me ideas on how to market my course, how to improve it, uh, additional tips, collaborations, community. By following these steps and ideas, you'll be well on your way to creating a comprehensive and engaging course about AI and chat GPT. So Let's just say that, again, I didn't know what to do. I want to create a course, but I don't know where to go. Instead of just saying, oh, well, I'll figure it out. I'm just going to ask ChatGPT. And now it came up with some ideas that I may not have thought of in the first place. So again, that is the final mistake that I want to cover in this video. And you guys would be surprised. It happens more than you think is that people just get so fed up and disappointed with ChatGPT because they don't know how to properly use the tool is they just quit and they never come back. So don't let that be you. If you're feeling discouraged at the very least, always use ChatGPT for ideation. If you don't know the answer, ask AI. So I hope you found some value in this video. Now, if you were making some of these mistakes that I outlined, that's okay. I've made these mistakes numerous times. As you'll see with the organization mistake in particular, I don't even have all my sidebar GPTs or sidebar conversations organized like I was telling you to do. Um, so don't be discouraged. I need to do that after this video. So remind me in the comments to do that. But I appreciate you guys watching. If you've made it this far in the video, um, hopefully this video has provided value. If it did, give it a thumbs up. If it didn't provide value, give it a thumbs down. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Be sure to subscribe to my channel at AI Insider Tips if you haven't already. I really appreciate all the support that you guys have given me for these videos and tutorials about the overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. And I hope you all have a great day.